right, Luke chapter 6 tonight. Luke chapter 6, verse 22 is where we're going to start tonight. Luke chapter 6, verse 22 says, Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and uh, shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in like manner did their fathers under the prophets. Now, does that sound like fun to anybody, you know, having people hate you and all this bad stuff? But listen, do we believe the Bible tonight? All right. I got to I got to ask us that every once in a while. Do we actually believe this Bible? All right. And right here, the Bible says we're blessed when people hate us, when they reproach us. All right. To reproach, you know, it means to to find fault when you get uh, when you're blamed. You know, another definition to upbraid or to be the cause of blame or discredit. To blame or censure, to convey in disapproval. I mean, it's just, you know, we all, we all, I think we know what that means, to be reproached. And look what it says in verse 26. It says, woe unto you, okay? You're blessed when people hate you. And when you see the term woe, it's talking about a curse, all right? You're cursed. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. But I say unto you, which here love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. All right, so right here, uh, some very interesting passages of Scripture, and some that are extremely misused, ignored. And one thing that I hear all the time and it just it makes me makes me mad when i hear it is when people they will go and start criticizing someone a church a preacher who preaches the truth who preaches things that aren't popular who preaches against sin and they'll go and they'll like you're bringing reproach on the name of jesus christ and they will they'll act they'll act like somebody who's a man of god that's preaching the truth is running the name of jesus christ through the mud They'll accuse you of that. They'll act like they're all high and mighty and spiritual. Accuse you of being terrible. You've got these churches out there that just love being loved. Okay, Nobody in the community would ever say anything negative about this church. Nobody's ever going to leave a bad review about this church on Facebook. You know, Nobody's going to say anything like that. I mean, they are desperate to be loved by everyone. And I'm just, right, listen, tonight... You know, I just I got to get some of this stuff off my chest. But let me tell you, the independent fundamental Baptist churches of America today are not in good shape. All right. And listen, I thank God that it's we were taught in the Bible to be independent, because if independent or fundamental Baptist churches, if we were a denomination, if we all were one group and controlled, then we would be forced to go down with the ship because the ship is going down. But thank God we're independent. We don't have to go down with the ship. And listen, I love other independent fundamental Baptist churches. I do, but I'm telling you, they're going down fast, and I don't want to go down with them. I, I refuse to go down with them, and I, I, I'm shocked. I, I'm disgusted by a lot of what I'm seeing going on, and a major movement I am seeing is this new attitude and of being, I don't even really know for sure what to call it. I'm trying to think of a good name for it, see if it'll catch on so I can, you know, people know what I'm talking about when I'm bashing it. But there is, there is this new movement on just, you know, what can we do to be loved by the community? And the thing is, listen, I'm not going to go out there and try to make people hate me. I'm not going to go out there and try to make people hate our church, okay? I'm not going to be obnoxious. I'm not going to be an idiot. But does, do we not believe the Bible? And the Bible warned us over and over again, we'll see more of these scriptures, that if we are godly, we're going to suffer persecution, that we're going to be hated. And the Bible says that we are cursed when all men speak well of us. And you've got these people today, they are desperate to be loved by evil people. And it's destroying churches. And we're seeing how many things there, I mean, just, I, I, thought, I thought every fundamental Baptist church had soul money. But I'm finding out more and more churches are dropping it. Churches are getting rid of it. They're not doing it anymore. And you know why? The community doesn't necessarily like it. You know, a lot of people don't like when you knock on their door 
and you tell them they need to get saved. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of people don't like it when you go and you ask them if they know 100% they're going to heaven and they say, well, I'm Catholic and we don't just respect that and say, oh, you're fine, you're going to heaven. You know, we, no, listen, we're not jerks about it, okay? We're not, we're not idiots about it. But, you know, we will try to correct them in a nice, kind way and say, well, you know, listen, it, it's not about your religion. It's not about being good. You know, the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. It, but listen, not everybody likes that. Not everybody wants to hear that. It makes people uncomfortable. People in the pews many times, they don't like doing that. They don't want to be challenged to do that. It doesn't make them comfortable being a witness. We've got a lot of people today. They would rather just sit back, you know, do their own thing, not stir things up, not cause trouble. We got a lot of pastors like that. They want to come in their community. They want to be in their community. And the way they want to make a difference is just, is just by loving everybody, which means make everybody love me too. And the truth is being loving means you're going to have to tell the truth and people aren't, they're not going to like it. But the thing is this new attitude is completely changing, changing the way people do church. It's completely changing everything. And it's not been for the good. It's, I think it is devastating what it has done to churches, but let's read a few more scriptures because I'm afraid. Well, one, one of the things we do in church day, we take little sentences in the Bible and we build doctrines around them. When, if we would just read whole passages, we would find out many times the way people use these statements are completely, I mean, they're completely butchering what the Bible was trying to teach. But first Timothy four, nine says, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation for therefore we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the savior of all men, especially of those that believe. Notice what Paul says, we suffer reproach. We get blamed because we trust in the living God. We're looked at like the bad people. Okay, that's what Paul did. All right, we've got all these churches that everybody loves that act like you know they're doing things the biblical way. They're doing things like Jesus because everybody loved Jesus, right? Isn't that why they were always wanting to kill him? And isn't that why they crucified him? Listen, people didn't like Jesus. Okay? They didn't. I, I don't know where they're getting this from. You know what, what's happened? I think people have decided that the name of Jesus, when they talk about the name of Jesus, and when they talk about, you know, that's not very Christ-like. Well, the Christ they're talking about is one of these effeminate hippie Christs, you know, that they see from Hollywood. They're talking about a Hollywood version of Christ. That's not a Bible version of Jesus Christ. And so, you know, we're not dragging his name through the mud. They're dragging his name through the mud because they have accepted an image of, of another Christ, okay? That peace, love, and greasy hair hippie Jesus that you see on television is not Jesus. And we've got, to, we've got to get that out of our minds. It's messing people up. But Paul said, we suffer reproach because we trust the living God. People are blaming us. They're making us like we're the bad people. Hebrews eleven twenty four. 24, by faith Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season... I don't know what the dispensationals do with this verse. Talking about Moses says, esteeming the reproach of Christ. Whoa, how, how, you know, they didn't believe on Christ back then. Well, they believe in God, they believe in Christ. I don't know what dispensationals do with that verse. But he said, esteeming the reproach of Christ, the blame. He's esteemed that greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing wrath, of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Now, wait a minute. Moses, he esteemed the reproach of Christ, the blame, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. Because look at all that Moses got for serving God. He got to be a shepherd for 40 years. Had a wife that nagged him. All right. <laughs> I remember that. You remember that story. And then he got to lead a bunch of whining, moaning, faithless Israelites through a wilderness for 40 years and then didn't get any go in the promised land. And he esteemed that better than the riches in Egypt. You know, Moses was not a loved guy. Moses went through a lot of difficult things here on this earth. But you know what? He was better off because his reward in heaven is great. And he, he, esteemed, he suffered the reproach of Christ during his day, during his time. But Christians today in America, they are, they're living in mortal fear 
of any type of persecution. They go to churches where preachers tell them you don't have to worry about going through the tribulation. We, and, so you, and then you got people in the churches, they're dropping their standards, and preachers, are, they have to quit preaching unpopular subjects so people won't have to deal with the tribulation of not being liked. Because that's, they can't even handle that tribulation. Somebody not liking them. Oh, listen, folks, you know, we want the people in town to like us. And you know, we, you know, we all know that church is supposed to be geared towards lost people, right? That's what people are doing. And listen, if, you know, if we're all dressed up nice on church, at church you know, we're going to make people uncomfortable. You know, if we preach hard against sin, how are those people going to know that we love them? And they are, they're gearing everything towards lost people, towards the community. Listen, yeah, the lost people aren't going to like it if we're all dressed up nice. And if we're singing hymns instead of, you know, more, you know, up to date stuff, they're not going to like the King James Bible. They're not going to like hard preaching. But where in the world can you find any place in the Bible where it says we're supposed to gear what we do to please lost people? Are we not supposed to be pleasing God with what we do? And it's very clear in the Bible, the lost are not going to like it. They're going to hate it and they're going to persecute us for it. And churches today, for some reason, they've got it in their head that they're being loving by changing everything that God has commanded us to do and gearing everything towards lost people. And they're calling it love. They're calling it being Christ-like. And they're calling churches like ours, you know, not being like Christ. You're bringing a reproach. On the name of Jesus Christ. I mean, it's, just, it's ridiculous. And, you know, and many churches, they're teaching that. They're pushing that. Many churches, they are teaching. They've got this attitude of gain is godliness. It says in 1 Timothy 6, 5, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself, but godliness with contentment is great gain. See, what's happening is... People are look when they're looking at churches and who's successful, they're looking at these big mega churches. They're looking at these big coffee shop churches, you know, these houses of merchandise where that you can go to and you can have all kinds of fun. They're just basically big community centers. And they go and these places, they're money makers and they're successful because everybody likes to have a good time. Everybody likes fun. And if you can go someplace that's basically an amusement park. And call it church, you know, a lot of people are going to be on board with that. A lot of lost people, a lot of carnal people, but you know what? Real Christians aren't going to like that. And you know what? It breaks my heart. All the people that I've talked to that go, that are, they are godly people. They're saved people. They're people that read their Bibles and they're stuck in these churches that have just abandoned everything that God has said to do. The preachers don't preach against sin. The preachers just preach salvation messages. They preach easy stuff every week because they're scared to death of offending anybody. They don't want to go soul winning. They don't want to do anything that might make the community look at them and think that church is weird. And then you've got real Christians in these places stuck. And they have nowhere to go. And I, my heart breaks for these people. That shouldn't be happening. You know I'm, I'm tired of hearing about churches dropping soul winning. You know what? We've got a lot of towns, you know, some of them, you know, within an hour that I, I don't think anybody's knocked those doors in probably 10 years. Nobody's gone souling those towns in 10 years. And you know, one thing I want to do is at least once a month, I just want to go and hit, go to a different town. I want to go to one of these towns that are just dead as a doornail, that nobody has done anything. Nobody has gone soul winning in these areas in 10 years and go knock those doors. And I don't care if we're in some other fundamental Baptist church's territory. If they're not going to go doing it, we'll do it. Yeah. Somebody's got to try to get these people saved. But you know why they don't do it? You know, there's a real, you know, this is just another subject. The reason people aren't doing it, they don't believe these people are really getting saved. Oh, well, they're not going to church after that. Therefore, they must not be saved. Really? So when did we teach? You know, when did it, when you, where do you see in the Bible where you have to go to church to go to heaven? And it's like we can't have Christians out there without a church to go to. So you would just rather them go to hell. I mean, is that your attitude? That's, that's like, that's the attitude. Listen, I don't care. I wish we could, you know, have churches to send them to, but they're not there. And these churches, they're just a joke anymore. And I'm disgusted by it. But many churches, they're teaching that the key to being a good witness is by being loved by everybody. That is not Bible. I don't know where that comes from. Clear scriptures make it very difficult for most Baptists 
to get away from certain doctrines that they want to get away from. But, you know, you'll never hear them, you know, proclaim these truths for fear of persecution. We have, you know, the, the homosexual agenda that's just in everything. It's completely infiltrated our politics and it's getting into churches too. And people get real uncomfortable when you start talking about that. No, you know, you know, the, you know don't, don't offend these people. Listen, we've got to talk about this, okay? There are churches all over the place that are flying the LGBT flags in front of their churches, welcoming perverts into their churches. I mean, you got kids in these churches, and it's like everybody's all down on the Catholic church because, you know, of all the perversion and all the child molestation that's going on there. And it's stayed out of most other churches because we've never allowed... You know, homosexuals in churches. But now, as we start opening the floodgates for them to come in, it's going to start happening in other religions too. It's not just going to be the Catholic Church. It's going to be all the religions. You've got the, you know, we talked a while back about the whole born that way movement that's trying to get going to teach that they're actually eunuchs. It's just another way to get homosexuals into church and working with kids. They're promoting letting these people work with kids. And all, listen, if Baptist churches are going to buy into that, you're going to start hearing on the news about little kids getting molested in Baptist churches too. It's going to be all over the news if Baptists buy into that foolishness. But we're not going to do that. We're going to keep preaching against these things, not worrying about being loved by everybody. But listen, as more pastors cower in the corner, it's going to take away the guilt that a lot of these churches have You know that they should be experiencing. You know, they don't like it when somebody's out there, you know, preaching the truth because they know they should be doing it. But because Christians have gotten comfortable doing nothing, they do they fear preachers who make strong public stands. It's like, you know, be quiet, you know. Don't say anything. You're making all of us look bad. You're bringing reproach on the name of Christ. And you know, instead of getting right, they do. These cowards, they just join in with the world in reproaching real Christians blaming them that is that that's wicked and what's disgusting about this they do they say we're dragging the name of jesus through the mud but they're in reality they are turning the name of jesus into something that it is not what they have done what they are doing is they are creating another christ they are creating another jesus you could say they're creating antichrist it, it is it's another just another form of of an antichrist movement that's going on in churches by turning Jesus into something that he's not making the, G, the name of Jesus into something that is not. Where do we see an effeminate Jesus in the Bible? Where do you see a long haired Jesus in the Bible? Where do you see this, you know, soft spoken, nice to everybody Jesus in the Bible? I'll show you some verses in a little bit where we see a different picture of Jesus in the Bible. And it's not the one you're going to, you're not going to see Hollywood make a movie portraying Jesus that way. It's just not going to happen. And you're not going to hear churches when they do their little plays and have Jesus in the stage. You know, even listen, I understand Hollywood trying to pervert everything. All right. I get it. I get why Hollywood perverts everything. But why is it that even when churches have plays with Jesus, they get a hippie up there to play Jesus. Why? I, I don't get that. Why do, why do they have to do that? You know why? Because that's what the community expects. That's what lost people expect. Lost people have bought in to this long-haired hippie Jesus. They, that's what they think it is. And if they did, if they had a short-haired, manly-looking guy out there, you know, preaching the fire out of people, you know, driving people out of the temple with a whip, you know, all, all the lost people can think, well, I don't like that. Of course they're not going to like that. They're lost, you know, but that's, that's the way it really is. But listen, the name of Jesus is the only name by which one can be saved. Do you realize that alone is going to put a target on your back? You saying that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Listen, we've lost the world right there with that. The world is not going to love us if we teach that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Acts 4.12, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. That's it, folks. That's what we have to preach. The world will not accept that. The world will not like that. Our community will not like that. Okay? If I go and I do enough rump kissing in this town, I might be able to get asked to go pray at one of these city council meetings or something. But you know what they always do at these things? Don't, play in Je don't pray in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray in Jesus' name. If I'm not praying in Jesus' name, I'm not praying. 
I, I'm not going to go and speak at these things and not be allowed to use the name of Jesus. But a lot of pastors are doing that. They're getting in all these community things and they're allowing them to censor them. And they're thinking, well, you know, how, how am I supposed to reach them? You know, how am I supposed to be a good testimony? You know, if, if I'm not in there doing that. Well, here's the thing. If you're not in there talking about Jesus, you're not being a good testimony. All right. Yeah, you'll make them like you. But you know what? We're not out there to make people like us. We're out there to point them to Jesus Christ. And a lot of people aren't going to like it. Some men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. If Jesus is the only name, that means all other gods will lead people to hell. Do we not believe that? Okay. Do we not believe that if you teach a work salvation, you're not going to be getting people saved in that church? So doesn't that mean all these churches that are teaching a works-based salvation? Listen, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not a mean guy. But are they not leading people to hell? If they are, then why in the world would I go and have these dinners with all the preachers of all the denominations? Why would I go to all their prayer breakfasts? Why would I do these things if I know these people are just leading everybody to hell? I'm not going to do that. Yeah, but you know, we, we, we got to be a good testimony. We, we got to make them like us. No, we don't. The Bible says we're cursed if everybody does. You know, and the Bible says we're blessed if they don't, so I'm not going to do that. Listen, if, if they ask me to go to one of these, I've been asked to go to some of these things. I've been asked to come and just be among them. If they came and asked me to speak, I'll speak. But I will be nice enough to warn them ahead of time. I'm going to preach the truth. And I'm pretty sure I'll lose my invite. I haven't, I haven't invited you know, to do that yet, but uh, I'm not going to do that. But you know, the gospel of Jesus that teaches faith without works is the only gospel. Therefore, all other gospels or religions that teach a works-based salvation are leading people to hell. Okay? False religions are enemies. Okay? Right. Now listen, I, I know what some of y'all are thinking. I know some of the verses you're thinking about, all right? Okay? I, I'm getting to those, all right? And I'm going to show you, you know, you, you, you've been led astray on many of these things. But uh, Romans chapter 11, verse 28, he says, as concerning the gospel, talking about the Jews, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Okay, why were they enemies? They're working against them. They were teaching another religion. They were teaching that Jesus was not the Christ or that Jesus was not the Messiah. They were teaching that, which was against their teaching. Therefore, the Bible says, they're your enemies. Okay? Now, do we kill our enemies? No. Okay? But at the same time, they are enemies. Okay? I'm not going to go encourage my enemies. I'm not going to support my enemies. I'm not going to fund those enemies. If there's somebody out there preaching another gospel, I'm not going to give them any money. I'm not going to encourage that. I'm going to rebuke that. And listen, something is wrong when you don't have any enemies. Okay? Some, something's wrong. And listen, everyone who knows the verse that says, love your enemies. We looked at that. You know, everybody, they, everybody knows that everybody loves that verse. But listen, how can you love your enemies if you don't have any enemies? Yeah, that's a, I, I think I might have that verse in my notes. I might be getting to that one. But yeah, he told the truth and he became their enemy. But you know what? A lot of these churches, they don't have any enemies. So how can they love their enemies? And that's what they do. They say they're trying to love everybody. You know, I, I just, I just want to love my community. I'm not out there to make ways. I'm not trying to cause trouble. I, I just, I just want to, I just want to love the community. I just want to be in my church, collect my paycheck, you know, and, and just, and just love and just love people. You know, we're just going to love people into the kingdom. But you know, the Bible says, love your enemies. And if for you to love your enemies, you have to actually have enemies. That means you need to be an opposing force. Y'all realize that? I mean, this is just common sense right here that you're going to have to be an opposing force. Matthew 5, 43 says, Ye have heard that it's been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you. How can you do that if nobody's ever going to curse you? Okay? I mean, do it. You know, go look at some of these churches and just listen, you know, go on their Facebook pages. It's all positive stuff. It's all five stars. It's all thumbs up. And then, you know, there's the churches that are out. You know, we're not on Facebook, but the churches that are out there, you know, that to me, I want to find a church that's got a whole bunch of thumbs down 
where a whole bunch of people are saying nasty things about him. You know why? Because let me tell you, the Facebook world is a nasty place. And when you're popular on Facebook and the whole world loves you, there is something deathly wrong with you. I, I would refuse to go to a church that's got five stars on Facebook. All right? I mean, I do. I want, I want lots and lots of negatives because I've seen what's in that crowd and what's in that place. And I'm, for, I'm not for anything that they're for. And they do these churches. Oh, my goodness. You know, we got people saying bad things about us on Facebook. What are we going to do? You know, let's go, you know. Let's go kiss the community's rear. Let's go bow before them. You know, let's go show them that we love them and let, you know, let's dress like them. Let's act like them. Let's give things away so they'll love us. Why would you do that? The Bible says, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. You cannot obey that if nobody ever curse you. If they never curse you, do good to them that hate you. How can you do good to people that hate you when nobody hates you? All right. For you to fulfill this, you have to have somebody hating you. Y'all, y'all, is this not just common sense, folks? And they do. All these little trendies that are out there, they'll love, love your enemies. They're always the ones talking about that, but they never love their enemies because they don't have any enemies. Nobody hates them. Nobody despitefully uses them. No one persecutes them. Listen, the new flag of the Fundamental Baptist Church needs to be, or should be, a white flag. Because that's what they're doing. It's just, I surrender, I surrender. You know, the community's not comfortable. All right, we won't do it. You know, we'll give you what you want. Let's bring in the rock music. You know, let's, let's, you know, let's pervert the scriptures. Let's do, you know, things easier. You know, let's dress down so lost people don't feel comfortable. You know, let's, we don't want to look like we're against anybody. You know, let's bring in the homos. Let's do all this stuff. Just wait. Why don't they just wave a white flag? Just wait. Just get a big old white flag. Don't put the LGBT flag in front of your building. Put a big old white flag out there. We're for anything. We surrender. We quit. But they're, they're doing that because they are terrified of persecution. And then they act like they're the loving peoples. Listen, if they're persecuting you, that's your opportunity to be loving. That's your opportunity to, to show that you really do have the love of Christ. Jesus, the, the love of Christ, okay? He loved us even though we sinned against him. He loved those that nailed him to the cross. You love though, these churches out there, they love those that love them. They're just trying to make everybody love them. And they do. They talk like they have the love of Christ. They don't have the love of Christ because they don't have enemies. They're not being persecuted. And it is, it's a big fraud. And I see right through it. And I, I have nothing, I'm going to have nothing to do with that. I'm going to have nothing to do with these churches. But loving your enemies is difficult because it means you're being cursed, hated, used, and persecuted. Okay? It's a piece of cake for these people. Anybody can love their own. Anybody can love those who love them. The Bible teaches that. But loving your enemies means you're loving those who are cursing you, hating you, using you, and persecuting you. That's what it means. These people, they, they have no clue what it means to love their enemies. The world could not possibly hate more churches because the people are no different. It says in John 7, 7, the world cannot hate you, but me it hateth, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. Okay? Why didn't they like what Jesus had to say? Because he was telling them they were evil. He, he testified that you're evil. They didn't like that. Okay? Somebody's got to let people know that it's fornication, adultery, you know, perversion, homosexuality. Those things are, are wrong. They're wicked. A lot of these people, they, don't, they, don't, they literally don't know. They've never heard it. They go to churches and they don't even know it's a problem if you're shacking up. They, they don't know that. They have no idea. Nobody's ever told them the truth. The Bible says in John 15, 18, If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Remember the word that I said unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all things they will do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Y'all see that? Jesus said, the world can't hate you, but they do hate Jesus. Okay? And once again, if the world loves us, then it's because we're not like Jesus. If the world hates us, it's probably because we're like Jesus. And they're not, and when they do it, listen, don't take it personal. It's for his name's sake. Okay? Why would they treat us different than they treated him? Okay? Once again, they killed him. 
You know, I, I, was th- I was thinking about it this week. You know what? I did not sit my entire life in Sunday school listening to stories about David and Goliath so I could lay down when a giant comes my way. I didn't go to Sunday school all those years, learn about Daniel, you know, praying against, which was against the law at that time. So I could just go along with all the laws that they try to create. I didn't hear all those stories about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego standing when everyone was kneeling. So I could just go along with the crowd. And it's like, that's what everybody wants you to do. Oh no, don't make waves. Don't do anything. Yeah, that's probably what they told Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. That's probably what they told. That is what they told David. His brothers, you know, don't go fight this giant. You're just trying to make yourself look good. No, David just loved the Lord. And what do they do? What do these wimpy Christians out there do whenever somebody does try to take a stand? They do. They falsely accuse you like David's brothers did. Oh, you're just trying to get attention. You're just trying to be a big shot. No, you're a coward and you're being made to look bad by those who are not cowards. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I did not, I mean, years and years of listening to those stories just so when I have an opportunity to take a stand, I can just lay down and do nothing. That's not what, that's not what I was trained to do, and I'm not going to do it. But let's, the, uh, John, or go to Romans chapter 12, verse 18. This is another verse that they just love to take out of context. Romans 12, 18, If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Live peaceably with all men, folks. Why can't we all just get along? You know what? Instead of knocking doors, you know, let's, you know, let's go join the, you know, community events and just give things away, you know, because we want to live peaceably. You know, we don't need to be stirring things up. You know, let, let's just get along with everybody. Okay. You know, the, the trendies that are out there, right? You know, the, the king of the trendies, they've got these, uh, you know, they have these idea day things that they do. And I'm not against, you know, getting together and coming up with ideas. I'm just against their ideas that they come up with. And I saw they, they had one of these recently. And I was looking at their agenda and list of things they were going to do. And one of the things that they wanted to do on there uh, that was on that agenda was how we can show the love of Christ to the LGBTQ community. And I saw the name of the guy on there that was doing that presentation Forgot his name. And so I looked him up and I want, I found a video of him doing one of these presentations. And I can see how he gets that group's attention, the way the guy dresses and the way the guy talks and all that. You know, pretty, pretty effeminate, pretty, dis, pretty discouraging. But man, you know, he's on there and just, you know, it, it was, it was like 50 minutes long. Didn't really use any scriptures. Just told a lot of stories, did a bunch of psychology stuff. Okay. And then the whole time I'm thinking, you moron do you realize the reason they are that way is because they rejected the love of god when they knew god they glorified him not as god and we're thinking you know how can we show the love to these people so we can bring them back to christ we can bring them to christ they've already rejected christ and that's why they're like that they've already seen the love of christ they've already seen the love of god and they rejected it that's what the bible teaches that's what the Bible teaches, but you know, we're, if, in order to be popular today, you know, we can't be down on those people. You know, we're a lot, we're still allowed to be against them. You know, we're allowed to be against gay marriage and stuff because Republicans are against gay marriage. So, right? and we're, you know, and we're allowed to be just as strong as you know Republicans are today, which I think is ridiculous. But you no, know, it's all bad. It's all wicked. It's all an abomination. And then, listen, these people, they're not just born that way, all right? This is something that happens to them as a result of them rejecting God, not wanting to retain God in their knowledge, okay? He's already been introduced. They reject it. And these people, they do, they just deny the Bible. And listen, all, we, you know, we're, they're scared of these people because they're real good at protesting things and getting the news media after churches and stuff. And, man, we can't have that. We can't have any of that. You know, we just, we got to figure out how to live peaceably with all men. That's what it says in Romans chapter 12. We just want to live peaceably with all men. We're going to do whatever we can to live peaceably as we just try to show them the love of God and just be so hip and trendy that they're going to want to come over our way. And, but let's, let's look at the verses before and after that passage. All right. Once again, let's use a little bit of common sense. Look at verse 17. Verse before that says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Providing things honest in the sight of all men, if it be possible, as much as life, then you live peacefully with all men. Notice it says that after saying recompense 
to no man evil for evil. Okay? When he's saying, do whatever you can to live peaceably, it's when people, once again, are doing evil to you. Okay? So, for example, you know, if you're getting persecuted by, you know, the fruitcakes out there, we are not going to retaliate. We're not going to shoot them. You know, we're not, you know, we're not going to go, you know, throwing tomatoes at them. All right. You know, we're not, we're not going to retaliate when people are doing evil to us. That's what the Bible means. Look at verse 19. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Avenge. For you to avenge yourself means somebody has to have done something to you, right? Avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy, you've got to have an enemy again, hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink, for in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. It is very clear in this passage that when it's saying, do as much as you can to live peaceably with all men. It's when you are being persecuted, when they are, when they are coming after you, when they're doing evil, but are these groups going after these churches? No, they're not. And let me tell you too, you got a lot, you got a lot of people out there. You got a lot of churches that are down on churches like ours that preach what we do about the homos. But the thing, the thing that you don't realize, you know, it's like, Oh, you know, they're just, you know, they're so scared of them, getting protested, coming after them. But listen, it's never going to stop with those people. All right? You've got those that preach the truth that, you know, hey, this is an abomination. It's, it's, supposed, it's supposed to be punished by death. And, you know, oh, no, you know, we can't do that. Okay, well, let's, let's go ahead and let's compromise on that. All right, fine. You don't have to put them to death, but it's okay to let them live in society, but, you know, they shouldn't be members of the church. You think they're going to be okay with that? Oh, fine, they can be members of church, but we still don't believe in gay marriage. You think they're going to be okay with that? Listen, they're going to keep pushing, and they're going to keep pushing until they're behind pulpits, until they're teaching Sunday school classes, until they're doing everything that everyone else does. They're not going to quit, folks. And let me tell you, if, even if, enough, if some of these churches are out there, even if they're a little more extreme, all right, even if they do, they take a little farther than maybe some of these liberal churches do, those liberal churches still should be supporting people like us. You know why? Because we're in the front lines. All right. If they get through us, they're going to them. Y'all understand it. They are going to, they're going to go to them and you've got it. Whenever they're being protest, these churches are being protested. Everybody just zips their lip. They stay out of it. No, oh, I'm not like they are. Okay. Well, you might not be that extreme, but they're coming for you next if they get through those people. And so they ought to be thankful for those that are on the front line. But it, uh, once again, that verse, it's just completely, completely destroyed. It's being completely misused. And when it says live peaceably, it means not to physically retaliate when you make them angry or they come after you because that's what's going to happen. And so the responsibility of the church is to fulfill the Great Commission, not to be a community social center, not to be a fun center. Okay, that's not what it's for. We are supposed to preach the gospel. We are supposed to baptize. We are supposed to teach them to observe all things. Now, do you think the world wants to hear that? Do you think the world wants to hear about morality and purity? No, they don't want to hear that. They don't want, but the Bible says that's what we're supposed to teach. We're supposed to teach that to the believers. We're going to preach the gospel out there. And then we're going to try to baptize them and get them in here and teach them to observe all things. But what you have today, you've got churches... Their only place where they try to reach the world with the gospel is in here. Let's do whatever we can to bring lost people in here. But the thing is, if we're filling our buildings up with lost people, we're not going to be able to teach them to observe all things. Because they're not going to get those. There's some things they're just not going to get because they're spiritually discerned, the Bible teaches. And so, you know, we've got, we've got, to, we've got to get our priorities back in order. And, the way church, and today, what churches don't realize is what they are doing, they are literally bringing a curse upon themselves by trying to avoid these enemies. All right, once again, go back to Luke chapter 6, verse 26. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. That's our goal. Make everybody like us. Five stars on Facebook, all thumbs up. That's what they did to the false prophets. Okay, that's what the Bible teaches. And, but, and what churches are doing today, they are making church comfortable for the lost and they don't even realize they're bringing a curse on themselves look what it says in ephesians chapter 5 
So, oh, these churches aren't cursed. Look how happy the people are. Yeah, look how much fun. You know, everybody's smiling at amusement parks. Okay, everybody's smiling on the merry-go-rounds and the, all those things. Everybody has fun at Six Flags. But listen, these churches, they are cursed. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saint's. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this ye know that no whoremonger, or unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Y'all see that? Amen. We're not, there's something that's not supposed to be once named among us. Well, here's the problem. Lost people like these things. And sometimes, listen, this isn't for everybody, folks. Okay? This is for saved people. This message I'm preaching tonight, it's for saved people. And lost people aren't going to like it. And if I try to make church, I can make church comfortable for lost people, but I'm going to have to leave a lot of the Bible out. And I'm bringing a curse. God is not going to bless our church with real blessings, with spiritual blessings. Yeah, we might get more money. We might have more fun. We might have a bigger crowd. That is not the blessing of God. Okay? People need to just, uh, once again, supposing that gain is godliness. The Bible says withdraw from them. Okay? We're going to stay away from that crowd. But the lost, they don't want to hear about hell or judgment. The lost, they're not complete, the least bit interested in holy living or spiritual things. 1 Corinthians 2.14 teaches those things are spiritually discerned. The lost, they're 100% interested, though, in the things of the flesh, like entertainment, food, fun, fellowship. They're all for that socializing. Okay? I read an article the other day in the news. Do you realize the sixth most likely place for affairs to start are in the church? Said. In the church. And when I read that, I'm like, what in the world? But then I got to thinking about it. They're including everything that calls themselves church. And what are churches all about now? Even in Baptist Church, it's all about building community. Let's come have our small groups where we can make connections and build community. But listen, when you build a community of sinners, when you build a community of lost people, they're going to do what lost people do. Right. Lost people fornicate. Lost people commit adultery. They do all these things. But when you have a church that preaches the truth, if you're a fornicator, you're not going to be comfortable around here. Okay? If you're an adulterer, not, listen... Thou shalt not commit adultery is coming up. All right? All right? Thou shalt not, that's, that's coming up. And you're going to hear about that. And it's not going to make you feel good. It's not going to make you comfortable. And, and we see that peop, the world knows 100% about that. And this new method of church, it is, it's, it's all about the things of the flesh. And the world's 100% behind it. And people are coming. And in, a, in the one place where they're supposed to be preaching against adultery and fornication, that's one of the more likely places for it to take place. Because these aren't churches, folks. I don't care what they call themselves. Church might be in their name, but they are not churches. And so, but when you build a community of sinners, you'll have uncleanness. When you build a congregation of saints, you'll have righteousness. Oh, righteous people, you know, say people aren't perfect either. Listen, there's some things that they do. The Bible says sometimes you've got to purge out the leaven. Oh, how will that make us look bad to the world? What will people say? Evil. What will they do? Persecute. That's exactly what they'll do. And that's Bible says we're blessed when that happens. But preachers are they're, they're You know, another thing that's bringing a curse. They're softening their stance on key doctrines. We, we got to back off. You know, instead of leading a charge, they literally are in retreat. You know, the internet has greatly changed most preachers. It, it's all gone downhill. Everybody's so scared of something going viral, you know, getting trashed on social media. The Bible says we're blessed when that happens. That we ought to, you know, we ought to leap for joy when those things happen. And people are terrified of it. And they don't even realize that they are cursing their churches. They're bringing the curse of God on their churches. Most p churches today are being dictated by internet trolls. They are. They're so scared. You know, listen, it takes no guts 
to anonymous, anonymously leave a comment online. And you know, it doesn't take that much guts to leave a public comment online. That doesn't take a lot of guts. But you got these churches, they're so scared. Oh my goodness, you hear what someone, this person said something about our church? People are going to look at that and think there's something wrong with our church. Yeah, lost people are. People like me are going to be like, good for them. Somebody's standing strong. Somebody's doing the right, somebody's doing the right thing. But they are. They're, they're being dictated by, once again, internet trolls. And I don't have time to go through all these passages, but once again, they're bringing a curse upon themselves by being like a Hollywood version of Jesus Christ. You know, read Matthew chapter 23, verses 13 through 39, when Jesus is preaching, and listen to all the names he called people. I wish I had time to go through that. I mean, man, he just let it rip. He was, he was brutal to them. It, and it was awesome. I loved it. I thought it was great. Jesus said in John 8, 43, Why do you not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? Ye are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. In him, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, and the prophets and thou sayest, If a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead, whom, thou, whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. If I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him, and keep his saying. Jesus called them liars. Yeah. You're not supposed to call people names. You know, John the Baptist did the same kind of thing too. I like when Paul called the one guy a whited wall. You know, listen, Jesus, Jesus wasn't afraid to tell people off. He wasn't afraid to get physical. Remember, he made that scourge of small cords and he drove them out of the temple. Oh, well, he didn't actually hit anybody. Well, then why did he make the whip? I think he took a swing at a few people. I'll bet he hit a couple people too. So Jesus wouldn't do that. Wait till you see what he's going to do at Armageddon, folks. I, I said, I don't know where people are getting... I do know where they're getting this image of Jesus. They're getting it from Hollywood. Okay? They're getting it from the charismaniacs that are out there. People just need to read their Bible. But listen, in order to be popular with everyone, you know, you do, you've got to... You, you've got to give the community what they want. And pastors are bringing destruction to their communities by not proclaiming the Word of God. Proverbs 29, 18 says, Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. And in 1 Samuel 3, 1, we talked about this thing, it was last week. The Bible said, you know, and, uh, and the child Samuel ministered before the Lord, before Eli, and the Word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. When the Bible talks about vision, it's somebody that's proclaiming truth. A place where truth is not being proclaimed is a cursed place. People will die. People will suffer. People will go to hell. You know, where there is no soul winning church, people are going to perish. Those people, are all, they're, they're going to die and they're going to go to hell. Okay? And even places where they're preaching the gospel, if they're not preaching the whole truth, people are going to live miserable lives. Even if they get saved, they're not going to become any better. If they're still living in sin, they're going to deal with all the consequences of sin. And you know, you know, think about this. why is it that in a town the size of ours, with all the churches that we have, with all the churches that are here, why is it that most of the people we talk to think you have to be good to go to heaven? Why is it that most of them think it's okay to shack up before marriage? It's okay to be a queer. You know, it's the things of the flesh are what church is all about. You know, it's all about the food. It's all about, you know, what we can give to people. You know, people, why is it that people think there are multiple roads to heaven? Out of all the churches that we have out here, how come most people think that? If you, I mean, do it. Go door to door with us sometime. Well, if, if we ask, you know, hey, do you, do you think, how do you think you get to heaven? You're going to hear all this stuff I mentioned. Do you, really, do you think that Catholics and Jews and Muslims, you know, do you think we all worship the same? Oh, yeah, we all worship the same God. It's all the same God. It's, it's all one. I hear that all the time. Why? In a church or in a town this size with as many churches that we have, how come so many think that? You know why? It's because, like most other towns, where there's no vision, the people perish. What these places are that are calling themselves churches are not churches. They're not preaching the truth. And preachers, pastors, they're letting their communities go to hell just so they will be liked. You can count me out of that. The Bible clearly teaches that before Christ returns, there's going to be a falling away. 
And you know what? I, I've scratched my head about that for years. You know, what, is that, what does that mean, that falling away? Because, you know, when you're, I've always kind of thought of the falling away as something that happens during the tribulation. But I got to thinking about it. You know, when somebody falls short, when they fall from grace, it doesn't mean they lost their salvation. It means they never got there. And do you realize that in most churches today, what's being taught, the people are falling from grace. They're missing it. They think there's works too. Therefore, they're not getting saved. They're falling from grace. And think about it, most religions. My wife says I say think about it a lot. I'm saying that again. All right. Now you got me nervous about that. But people are they're doing that or the churches are going that way. In many religions, it's hard to find a saved person. There was a time when a lot of the different Protestant religions, I mean, you'd find a lot of saved people there. But that's not the case today. And did you know, even in Baptist churches, I think we're seeing the falling away. You've got, in many Baptist churches, they're teaching a false repentance that's basically a work salvation. In Baptist churches today, you've got the Sam Gipps coming in there teaching that Jesus wasn't supposed to be called Jesus, messing with the name of Jesus, saying that Jesus isn't his Messiah. And guys like him are preaching that stuff in churches and nobody's even batting an eye. How could that be? And I've wondered for years, you know, when you see some of these things in the Bible, it's like, you know, how in the world is the Antichrist going to deceive people? You know, there, there's no way, you know, that I, I heard Sam get making fun of these, you know, post-trib people like us when he's saying, you know, when they say he's in the desert, believe him not. Are any, anybody in here going to think that Jesus is in the desert? You know, if they say that or if he's in this place or that place, we all know better than that. Right now we do. But if we keep listening to people like him, it's only a matter of time and people will be dumb enough to believe that. If somebody says, hey, Jesus is over in this place, they'll believe it and they'll go. You know why? You know, no, we're never going to get that dumb. Listen, we're dumb enough now that the guy can say that Jesus wasn't supposed to be called Jesus and that he's not going to be called Jesus and the millennial kingdom and nobody's batting an eye. People aren't believing it. And folks, I think we're seeing it. I think we're seeing the falling away. And when a guy can get up and preach the kind of stuff he preaches in Baptist churches and nobody throws them out, that, there must be an awful lot of lost people in there. And when preachers... You know, they haven't even got the guts to distance themselves from a guy like that. Something's missing, folks. Something's missing on the inside. I'm seeing very clearly now that, you know, just like the Bible says, people are going to be deceived. And they're not going to lose their salvation. They never had salvation. We've had a falling away. Many people who consider themselves Christians have bought into lies and bought into a false gospel, and they are not saved, even in Baptist churches. And you know what? Once again, thank God we're independent. We don't have to fall for this stuff. We don't have to go down with the ship. We can keep on doing the right thing. We can keep on preaching the truth. And once again, that, I don't, yeah, that falling away, it's not, it didn't happen overnight, folks. It's been a long time. In 2017, it is very easy to see that deceptions that we never thought could happen, could happen. After what I have seen this year being taught in behind Baptist pulpits from Baptist preachers, I, if, I believe anything. I believe people can be deceived by anything. If you can mess with Pete, the name above all names, the only name whereby one can be saved, and get away with that, you can get away with anything. And, it, and it's happening. And folks, we better, we better take this serious. We better step up our efforts. We better stop comparing ourselves with other churches. Because let me tell you, the bar has been dropped so low, folks. All right, if we're going to compare ourselves with other fundamental Baptist churches, do you realize how far down we have gone? We better just forget about that. And you might think, oh, no, we're doing pretty good. Listen. I'm not going down with the ship, folks. We better double and triple our efforts in this day and age that we live in. I'm not, I, I'm not doing that. I'm not going down without a fight. I'm gonna, I want to keep on being faithful. I want to keep on doing the right thing. And I don't care what this world thinks. I don't care what all the other preachers think. Said, I did not spend all those years in Sunday school listening to those stories. So I could just give up 
when my first bit of opposition comes my way. I, I, I didn't do that. I owe those Sunday school teachers and all those preachers that preach that stuff to me to remain faithful and do what they, I was taught to do, even if they're not doing it. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And so with that, let's all stand together.